The radio station we know today as WGFR has its origin in 1974 as a carrier current or closed circuit radio station. It was uh, a project by a group of students with some help from a local broadcast engineer and it operated in the student center. As a carrier current station, it meant that the radio station didn't actually broadcast over the air. It was really a closed circuit operation, meaning you had to be in the, in the building to be able to listen. Uh, but it was very popular for students hanging out in the student center, and it was really a popular experience for students at the radio station. There were a number of young students and older students really interested in the radio experience, and that's where it started. So 1974, it was just a, a club, um, but by 1975 or 1976, popularity and enthusiasm continued to grow. So the Board of Trustees, with some prompting from a business faculty member, decided to apply with the FCC for a construction permit, which is the first step in, in getting a broadcast license. So by 1976, the radio station was under construction and in early 1977, the FCC authorized the broadcast license for the radio station, at which time the students and faculty advisor realized that the call letters they had previously used and their first choice, WACC, those call letters weren't available. They were in use by another radio station. So they went to a second option, which was WGFR, meaning Glens Falls Radio, and that's where the call letters uh, originated. So January 17th, 1977, WGFR went on the air for the very first time. I'm Steve Taft. I'm the WGFR radio station supervisor. I actually was a student here back in 1977, back when WGFR first went on the air. And uh, I was here the first day that we went on the air, and I was on the air that very first day. Uh, before that, WGFR was, uh, wasn't even uh, on the air, it was just in the student center and just broadcast to the student center. But uh, I've been here uh, as a student and as a supervisor ever since then, pretty much. Uh, it was a very popular radio station through the late 70s and early 80s, both with college students at SUNY Adirondack, then Adirondack Community College, uh, and uh, also popular in the community. Uh, for a number of years in the late 70s and early 80s, the radio station was located in the student center with uh, an on-air studio, a newsroom, uh, a small meeting space, and a couple of staff offices. Sometime during the late 80s or early 1990s, the radio station relocated to Washington Hall. At that time, Washington Hall was where the college library was, and there was also a computer lab on the ground floor, and that's where the radio station was located, in a corner of that computer lab. I am an adjunct professor. I instruct currently two different courses. Writing for radio and television is the course I'm currently instructing this semester. 1990 through 1994 is when I was a student here. I was not on the radio the first semester I was attending college here. But my second semester through the end of attending campus, I was on the air here, yes. When I first came here as a student, you had to be a broadcast enrolled student in order to be at the radio station. It wasn't open to all students on campus. It was in the computer lab at that time. So the radio station was only on when the computer lab was open. You had to go through sign on and sign off procedures. It was in the same building as it is now. It is where the media arts facilities are currently. So where your edit suites are is in the same vicinity where the computer lab was. But the back of that room is where the radio station was. The far back corner was Studio C, the center was Studio B, and then to the left of that was Studio A, which was the on-air studio. When the Scoville Learning Center, the new library building, opened in the late 1990s, WGFR moved down the hall in Washington Hall to its current location. I arrived at the college in 1998, and when I got here, uh, the radio station was in its current location in Washington Hall, and at the time, the radio station had just recently purchased new audio control boards, and those control boards were actually donated by 
the Adirondack Broadcast Association, a student group. So the radio station was fairly up to date in terms of the control boards in three studios, um, but they were still phasing out cart machines, audio tape, um, and had just really introduced computers to the production process. One of the first things we decided to do was move toward automating the on-air process and getting music into uh, digital form. And we started with a software program called Cart Ready, which replaced cart machines and allowed DJs to play promos and public service announcements and legal IDs from a computer hard drive. Uh, at the time, the radio station was broadcasting in FM mono. Uh, and our audio was delivered from the studio on campus to the transmitter in downtown Glens Falls via uh, a leased pair phone line. So there was very often an audio hum associated with telephone lines. In 2005, we were able to secure funding for a microwave relay, a studio to transmitter link, which provided us better bandwidth to get the signal to the transmitter, improving audio quality, and we also were able to purchase a new stereo exciter, so we began broadcasting in FM stereo in 2005 with a pretty high quality sound delivered by that microwave STL. The radio station had a website when I got here in 1998. The website WGFR.org was about a year old. With uh, some encouragement from a lot of students and support from the college, in July of 2007, we began 24-7 web streaming. And since that time, we've been streamed in more than 100 countries around the globe, which is uh, pretty exciting for students to, to see a map with all those push pins in it. My name's Mary Howard. I'm known, though, as M. Howe, and I am the promotions director for WGFR The Revolution. I became promotions director back in February after uh, DJ Jack left. So I decided to take on the uh, extra responsibility and the challenge to better our station. There has been some challenges um, being promotions director. All the DJs are constantly asking me questions about things, and I, I enjoy helping them out. And the social media pages is another big responsibility, getting all the schedules right on the website, the on-air schedule especially, updating, you know, if people want to have their Facebook page featured on the website as well, getting that all updated, and then the day-to-day -day task of figuring out what to write on Facebook, figuring out who can I target as an audience next. And this semester I've actually created Twitter and Instagram pages for the station as an effort to continue expanding the promotional field. Um, Twitter and Instagram are big, big things now. We've had a newly designed website, which has been very more uh, user-friendly, very interactive. Um, we have a lot more information on there than in previous years, which is really nice because people can go get information on their favorite DJs. The website before we got it redesigned was very boring. It was very confusing. It was too busy. There was a lot of stuff. Now it's laid out where it's much more organized. Last fall we got a brand new logo, updated, made it the school colors, made it a little more I think campus friendly I guess I could say. We've gotten a lot of uh, positive feedback on that. Pretty soon we're gonna have a video featured on the website kind of to get people to know us a little bit more. I'm looking to do is better the station. I have a big love for this station. I have a huge love for all the people that are a part of it. Um, the station right now is actually, I think it's doing fairly well. I do get a lot of people sending music to us on Facebook. I get people asking questions from time to time. I hear about people who have been listening, so that's a really positive feedback that we've been getting. We're going along strong and we're going to continue to grow and we're going to continue to have uh, major success as we go along. Uh, and today we operate uh, with an on-air studio, two production studios. We have a, a lobby area that also serves as a music director's office and we have a faculty office. Mm -hmm.